In the latest update to Adobe Muse, we got this new feature where we can sync the content of two text boxes, which kind of got my wheels turning. I thought this is really exciting. I can now create the content once and have it show up on both the desktop and mobile version or between different web pages if I have consistent content that shows up on multiple pages. And I only have to change it once, and it changes on every page. It's really, really cool. Uh, it got my wheels turning about graphics, though, and I was pretty disappointed that there, so far, is no way to sync graphics between two pages. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the feature, let me just demo real quick. I have a text box over here on the left. Here is some syncing text. And when I hit escape to leave that text box, you see that that text synced over to here. Now the purpose of this isn't necessarily to use on the same page, unless you have repeating text across the page. It's more so to sync text from page to page. But what's really cool is if we look over here in the top right corner at the font that I have selected, I have the Icon Megapack web font selected from museresources.com. Now this is the Icon Megapack that I created, but I turned it into a web font to allow us to use it in full vector format and scale it uh, in lieu of the fact that previously we couldn't use SVG files. But now there's a huge, huge advantage to this web font that was not there before. And that's that because it is text, because these icons are text, I can pull up the glyphs panel, I can insert an icon, and whatever icon I use syncs from text box to text box because it is read by Muse as being text, even though they are icons. So let's start from scratch here. Let's say I have these arrows because I do have these arrows that repeat across this web page. I've got these down arrows. I'm just going to go through and delete these down arrows because these were dropped in as just regular old static graphics. I'm going to get rid of those because if the client, Tara Bird, wants a change here, it's going to be hard for me to go and do that change. And if she's indecisive, I'm going to have to go through and I'm going to have to change all of those over and over again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a regular text box. I'm going to create it about yay big. And then I'm going to go over and I'm going to select as my font the Icon Megapack web font. Now that I have that font selected, I'll center it up. I'll make my font size a bit larger here. And then I'm going to open up the Glyphs panel. And if you guys don't see the Glyphs panel, then you'll want to go to the Help menu, or not the Help menu, rather. Well, personally, I use the Help menu because I'm on a Mac, and I can just type the word Glyphs. But if you're not on a Mac, just go to Window and look for the word Glyphs to bring up the Glyphs panel. And then once you've done that, if you're using the Icon Megapack web font, you now have 458 different icons to choose from. So I've got a bunch of arrows in here. Let me grab an arrow. They're all facing the same direction because I can then rotate this text box. So let me do my two downward facing arrows here. Well, they're not downward facing yet. But I'm going to go in, switch to my selection tool, and I'm going to rotate this text box. I'm going to do so holding the shift key so it locks into place uh, in 45 degree increments. So now that I've got these arrows here, don't be, don't be off put by the fact that the, the little arrows are... Uh, to the right hand side of the text box. It really doesn't matter how they are positioned in the text box. Uh, but I can now change the color. I'm gonna change to a blue that matches the logo here. And now, before I start repeating this all over the page, with this text box selected, I'm gonna come over here to the content panel. This is also new. If you don't see the content panel, again, you can go to window and turn on content. Now with the content panel, there is a little new button at the bottom, looks kind of like a new layer icon, that creates a new collection for my uh, selected syncing text areas. So I'm going to name this collection Icons, so that way I can tell the icons apart from the uh, text, the actual text that I have synced between pages. And then for the name of this particular icon, I'm going to name it uh, Down Arrow. Now that I've named it down arrow, I've now got a syncing text box that I can repeat all over the page. So I'm going to option drag this to duplicate it. That's a little trick. It's alt on the uh, PC, option on the Mac. And I'm going to drag this down and put it into position here where it is now on the wrong layer. So you got to be careful of that. Uh, instead of doing the option drag, I might actually just go and copy and paste this the traditional way. I'm going to hit command C, control C on the PC, and I'm going to come down here to this layer and hit paste. So here I have it. It's on the right layer now because I did a copy and paste. And uh, I've got to kind of eyeball it. It's not going to lock into center because it's not centered in the text box because I had to rotate it. It was a rightward facing arrow. And now that I have it put in place, here's another really cool thing about these syncing text boxes. They don't sync the style. So if I change this to white, it doesn't mess up the one that I have up above. It's syncing the content, but it's not actually syncing 
the uh, style. So I can change the style each instance of this arrow. So I'll copy and paste it again and again and again, et cetera, et cetera. You guys probably get the point. So once I've got these arrows dropped in here, where it becomes really, really cool is if the client, let's say Tara says, you know what, I don't like those arrows. They're a bit angular. They don't look friendly enough. I can go in and I can highlight that. I can go back over to the glyphs panel and I can make a change. Let's see if there's a different softer arrow. Let's say she likes these basic triangles here. I'll switch it to the basic triangle. It's already rotated because my text box was rotated. And as I scroll down and I look at each one, it has updated for me. So I have these graphics now syncing, not only all the way down my page, but if I use these graphics on another page, let's say I go and copy and paste this, and this is really the most important part, I can copy and paste this onto a different page like the mobile version. And if I paste it onto the mobile version, and it ends up getting changed, it changes from the desktop version to the mobile version. So let me go ahead and pick a different arrow here. Let me just do this uh, straight arrow here. Or let's say it was even something more crazy. Let's say these weren't arrows. Let's say they were, I mean, there are some financial icons in here, some thumbs up, thumbs down. I mean, there's all kinds of great icons in here that are gonna be useful for different things. Uh, let's say we even have uh, like a Twitter icon or something like that. I'll go ahead and click on the Twitter icon, and now it's a sideways Twitter icon. But the idea is now that I've placed it here into this syncing text box, it is going to show up on every page, and it doesn't affect the color. It doesn't mess up the style. I can even use paragraph styles. I can use paragraph styles because this is text to style the text and to repeat that style on different pages. So that way if I decide to change the style or the color, it'll change everywhere instead of just on this one page. Um, another thing that's pretty cool, speaking of colors, and I had a tutorial on this in the past, is if this text does correspond with a particular color swatch, let's say I've got this yellow color swatch, if I come over to this page and I go and use that same yellow color swatch, let's say in the future I change my mind about that yellow. Rather than changing the yellow over here, if you double click on the yellow swatch, it opens a different dialog box. And if you make the change on this dialog box, let's say I make it more of an orange color, it does take effect on here, but more importantly, it changes everything that's used that swatch. So if I go back to this page where that swatch was used, you can see it is now that burnt orange color. It's no longer that yellow color. So not only can we synchronize the content, we can also really easily synchronize the color. Really, really easily. You just have to double click on the same swatch that you used. Uh, just be careful not to use the same swatch for things that might differ from one another uh, because when you change one, it will change the others. So I know this is kind of a lot and I kind of blasted through the whole content and glyphs aspect of this. I'll put a link to the tutorial explaining the syncing text boxes in greater depth. But I just wanted you guys to know that because of the Icon Megapack web font, we can do graphics, not just text. And I think that's, that's really a big game changer. Uh, keep in mind too that with these uh, synchronized text boxes and with these icons, you'll probably want to add your hyperlinks to the box rather than adding your hyperlinks to the text itself. If I went in here and highlighted the icon, it would hyperlink the same hyperlink on all instances. Even though the style doesn't sync, the text content, meaning the icon in this case, and the hyperlink do both sync together. So you'll probably want to add the hyperlink to the text box so that way this, the hyperlink doesn't sync unless you want the hyperlink to sync. But in my case, because I have the same icon repeating on this page several times, uh, I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna be using a different hyperlink on each instance, so I'll hyperlink the box itself. I hope this tutorial is useful. If you guys think you'll get use out of these icons, they are infinitely scalable. You can set them to any color you want and sync them, and they're available on museresources.com. When you visit museresources.com, there's a banner right here because it is the cool new thing, and you can download and purchase these icons for uh, 15 bucks. So pretty cool stuff. Please subscribe if you haven't already and enjoy these icons that I've made for you guys. I think you'll get a lot of great use out of them.